Hi guys, you are warmly welcome to Universe of So Online Teacher YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss about SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis or we can say sodium diodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Before I start the session, I divide this topic to five section because I am thinking it is easy for understanding. So we will see what are the these section. The first one is introduction to SDS page. Second one is the components and their function of sample buffer. Third one is polyacrylamide gel preparation. Fourth one is the principles of protein separation on SDS page. And the last one is staining and de-staining. Okay, now let's move to introduction of SDS page. This is a type of electrophoresis which is used to separation of proteins based on their molecular weight. So in here, the protein molecules are separated based on their size. However, the charge of the protein molecules, concentration of the polyacrylamide gel, pH of the polyacrylamide gel and electrophoresis voltage effect to the protein separation. I will cover these all things in my lecture. So in here we are using vertical gel system which are containing two electrodes named as cathode and anode. So when the current supply is connected, a current field is formed between these electrodes from negatively charged cathode to positively charged anode. So we know there are four types of protein structures. The quaternary and tertiary protein structures have higher molecular weight and they are folded with positively and negatively charged. So the protein samples require a per preparation before the SDS page. Two things are expected from per preparation of protein samples. The first thing is denature the protein molecules to simple structure. And the second thing is give negative charge to all protein molecules. For that, the protein samples should be boiled for 5 minutes in sample buffer. Okay, now come to sample buffer and try to understand its function. Basically, the buffer sample contains 4 components. Those components are sodium dodecyl sulfate, beta mercaptoethanol, sucrose or glycerol and a tracking dye such as bromopinol blue. The beta mercaptoethanol reduces the disulfide bonds which are in tertiary structure of proteins. SDS binds strongly to proteins and contributes to denaturation of proteins. So, after the treatment, we have different sizes of polypeptide chains which are containing series of negatively charged SDS molecules. Now our all protein molecules are negatively charged. So they should be moved from cathode to anode. That means negatively charged electrode to positively charged electrode during the electrophoresis. In here, bromopinol blue is acting as a tracking dye. That means it has negative charge. So it is moving from cathode to anode. So we can monitor the electrophoresis process by this tracking dye because when it reaches to the end of the gel, that means electrophoresis is done. So what is the function of sucrosoglycerol? Sucrosoglycerol helps to increase the density of the protein sample. So the protein sample can settle easily through the electrophoresis buffer to the bottom of loading well. Now let's discuss about the gel which is used in SDS page. In SDS page we are using polyacrylamide gel. This gel has two parts. One part is called as separating gel. Second part is called as stacking gel. So in animation you can see what is the arrangement of these parts in a gel and what are the size of the, these parts. So separating gel has 
5 cm height and stacking gel has 0.8 cm height approximately. I am not going to discuss about how to form the gel in detail. If you, if you want to know, I will give you a link below this video. You can go to that link that is our official website. In there, you can get full practical details about this technique. Okay, again come to the lecture. We were discussing about stacking gel and separating gel. So what are the differences between stacking gel and separating gel? Stacking gel contains 4% of acrylamide, so it has a lower concentration of acrylamide than the separating gel. So it contains very large pore size. So when we talk about separating gel, it contains 15% acrylamide, high, con high concentration. So it has a very small size of pores and when we talk about the pH, stacking gel has 6.8 pH and separating gel has 8.8 pH. The pH and the concentration of acrylamide are very important to protein separation. So now come to protein separation part. So you might have a problem why we are using stacking gel and a separating gel because we need to concentrate the protein sample into a sharp band in stacking gel before it enters the main separating gel otherwise we can't detect a clear protein separation on the polyacrylamide gel but how do we achieve a sharp band of proteins it is based on two factors one is utilizing the difference in ionic strength between the electrophoresis buffer and stacking gel buffer the second is utilizing the difference in pH between the electrophoresis buffer and the stacking gel buffer. So now see the animation while I am explaining these things. So then you can understand how do we perform a sharp band of protein in a stacking gel. So there are two types of ions which are moving to anode with the protein SDS complex. One is glycinate ions which have come from electrophoresis buffer. Other is chloride ions which have come from loading buffer and the stacking gel buffer. So when we consider the electrophoretic mobility of these three individuals, glycinate ions have a lower electrophoretic mobility than protein SDS complex. Protein SDS complex have lower mobility than the chloride ions. So during electrophoresis near to the boundary of stacking gel we can see a pattern of concentration of these ions. You can see that pattern on the video. There is only a small quantity of protein SDS complexes. So they concentrate in a very tight band between glycinate and chloride boundaries. Then these ions enter to separating gel. Now pH is different. It has higher pH than stacking gel. So due to this pH, glycinate becomes more fully ionocyte and its mobility increases. So protein SDS complex will leave from the glycinate and chlorine boundaries. That means now these three individuals are moving to anode by their own rates. Now it's time to separation of proteins based on their size. The sieving effect of the gel is coming to the scenario. That means we know separating gel contain high concentration of acrylamide, So it has smaller size force. So the small protein molecules can move through this force very easily. But the moving through the small pores is very difficult to large protein molecules. This prevention is done by the frictional resistance due to the saving effect of the gels. Okay, now come to staining and de-staining part. When tracking dye reach to bottom of the well, we know electrophoresis is done. At that moment, we have to remove the gel between the plastic plate and we have to stain the gel for further observation. For staining, we use 
cumulative brilliant blue dye and after staining we have to wash the gel with the de-staining solution. The de-stain solution removes unbound background dye from the gel, leaving stained proteins visible as blue bands on a clear background. Okay, these are all about of the principle of SDS page. So I'm thinking you got my lecture. If this video was important for you, please like it and share it. And guys, subscribe for our channel so you can get new videos like this.